When it comes to the topic of female characters in shonen, you often hear a lot of negative things about them. This ranges from a variety of reasons from bullying, lack of development, overuse of fan service, lack of relevance to the main story, and a few other things. However, there has been one character for a while now that hasn't been talked about enough when it comes to how good of an actual character she is. What's up guys? S71K here and today we're going to be talking about one of if not the best new gen heroine Noelle Silva. However before we begin I would greatly appreciate it if you guys would hit that like button subscribe if you guys are new as we were trying to hit a thousand subs. That being said let's go ahead and jump into the video. Let's start with Noelle's backstory and then work from there. When Noelle is first introduced she starts off as a spoiled brat who doesn't like being surrounded amongst commoners due to how she was raised. For those who don't know, Black Clover, those of royal blood, tend to have prejudice towards those of a lower class due to them not having as strong of magic and, of course, wealth. Noelle and her family obviously are no different from this exception. Noelle was raised with three siblings, herself, of course, being the youngest. Her siblings always harbored a lot of hatred towards Noelle due to the fact that their mother died giving birth to her. In order to deal with the trauma of their recently passed mother, her siblings abused her. Noelle experienced both mental and physical abuse from the hands of her siblings for something that was completely out of her control. This lasted for 15 years and the sad part about this, this wasn't the only abuse she received. Noelle was also ostracized from other royals and nobles because she was unable to control her own magic. In Black Clover, the Clover Kingdom is full of prejudice, discrimination, and of course, just a ton of hate. Between being ostracized from her own economic class and the 15 years of abuse from her own family she received, she develops an inferiority complex and what she always calls herself royalty is to overcompensate for her always being told she's not one and a reminder of the expectations set on her. Next I really want to dive into Noelle's internal and external conflicts. Noelle is a character who has a lot of internal struggles that manifest into her external problems. When we're first introduced to Noelle she consistently puts up the facade of her being a disagreeable, annoying, and arrogant royal when really she's just a timid girl with poor battle skills and a ton of trauma. She's timid because she's afraid of being embarrassed and abused for her failure. Her lack of battle skills isn't due to her lack of training as we see her training a lot, but instead due to her lack of magic control and of course the trauma being from her own past. Speaking of not being able to control her magic, at the Black Bulls hideout we see time and time again she is unable to control her magic to the extent she can't even hit a target. This is due to stress, her past trauma, lack of confidence, and a few other reasons. However, this starts to change when she meets Asta and the Black Bulls. After Noelle gets rescued from the sphere of water from her own magic that went out of control, her first instinct is to prepare for humiliation from failure, but immediately for the first time in her life, she was not only given encouragement, but also treated as an actual human being. This was when she started to learn that not everyone had the same mindset as their family and that there are genuinely good people in the world. Before I can continue with her internal and external conflicts, I need to explain the magic system in Black Clover and how it relates really well to Noelle. Magic in Black Clover is a very unique power system as the magic you unlock pertains to you as a person. The more you grow as a person, so will your magic. Noelle is someone who wants to protect those that she cares about, so her magic fits that description. The first spell we see her get access to is during her first mission and she's trying to protect the townsfolk from villains terrorizing the place. The spell she unlocks is called Sea Dragon's Lair. Sea Dragon's Lair is a sphere of magic meant to protect those within it. Sea Dragon's Lair is a sphere of water meant to protect those within it. It's fitting she unlocks a spell that gives her access to her amazing magic potential while also giving her the ability to protect those around her. As mentioned earlier, during the beginning she struggles to hit a target and we come to find out later during the underwater temple arc is because of stress, trauma, lack of confidence, and a few other things. Being around the Black Bulls it was allowed her to alleviate some of those issues. We could see this as she was able to manifest Sea Dragon's Cradle which is the spell she tried to use at the very beginning of the series but for some reason it kept failing but this was because of stress and trauma from her past. When she finally unleashed Sea Dragon's Cradle in the underwater temple arc it was because she finally started to form happy memories but only because of the support of the Black Bulls which managed to free her from some of the trauma and stress which prevented her from being able to control her magic. Later in the arc when Noelle finally unleashes one of her first attack spells Sea Dragon's Roar she was able to do so because she finally had a target that she didn't need to worry about damaging because it was in order to protect her friends and companions. The reason why she was unable to hit anything with her magic is because she was unconsciously making it to where her magic would actually miss because she didn't want to hurt anybody. I personally found this aspect of her character to be very interesting because despite all of the abuse and trauma that she went through as a kid, she still never harbored any ill will towards anybody. The reason why she was able to unlock it in the first place is because she saw Asa on the ground completely destroyed and her friend Kimono in the grasp of Vettel's hands about to be crushed to death. The interesting part about this moment is that this beast of a man, the first time he takes any major damage is from the bite of an attack from an animal higher up on the food chain which is the sea dragon's roar which came from Noel. Now speaking of offensive spells and protecting people, during the fight in the Silva family, castle and elf arc comes one of my favorite moments in the entire story of black clover so far 
It was only after Nozelle's acceptance as well as the immediate need to protect the siblings that abused her for so long that the chains of her past trauma finally break and Noelle was able to unlock her Valkyrie armor which allows her to dance to the sky and fight as well. I found this moment to be one of the most beautiful in the story considering it was Noelle's motherly desire to protect her family that allowed her to unlock her deceased mother's power which allowed her siblings to see their mother again. Now I also want to talk about parallels that she shares with other characters in the story. The first being Magic Knight Captain Charlotte. Both ladies are from high class families and have had their issues with magic. As well as being saved by Asta and Yami, people are meant to be below them in society. They can't grasp their feelings towards them. Both ladies at some point also felt like complete outcasts because of their magic. Now a lot of people might not notice this one at first, but she also shares a parallel with Asta. Both Asta and Noelle were treated like trash since their birth. Noel because of her lack of control of magic and Asta before being a peasant as well as an orphan. Both characters coming from two different worlds in society know what it is to feel like an outcast and both characters work so hard so that they can one day be treated as an equal and respected in society. And now for Noelle's symbolism. Noelle's character mirrors the story of the ugly duckling. The ugly duckling wasn't accepted by its family because it was ugly. It later down the line became a swan and became the most beautiful one of them all. It eventually did find a group that accepted it and made it feel like it finally had a place to belong. This is Noelle finding the Black Bulls and being accepted among them. Now for her armor and magic, Valkyries are associated with swans which is why her favorite Valkyrie dress is a mix of armor and swan wings. It's also a representation of how far she's come as a fighter and as a person. As mentioned earlier in the video, magic in Black Clover is a very unique and well developed power system as the magic unlock pertains to you as a person. The more you grow as a person, so will your magic. If you're a person who wants to protect others, you will have a magic that allows you to do so. This goes hand in hand with Noelle's magic. Noelle's magic is water and in literature it represents cleansing, life and freedom. Water is also a contextual symbol in literature, however it can also symbolize many different things depending on how it is used in a novel or a story. And in the case, water is a symbol of power in stories, as the ability to free characters as well as claim them. In the case of Noelle, she's chained down by the trauma of her childhood and eventually grows up to the point she could face her opponents and protect those she cares about with the strength of the same magic that led her to become ostracized. What makes Noelle's character very refreshing for a shonen heroine is the fact that Noelle is not just some useless underdeveloped side character or a random love interest. The fact that she has been shown time and time again to be stronger or equal to Asta and his main rival Yuno and just as reliable shows she's not useless. The fact she deals with her own internal and external conflicts by herself and at times with the support of her friends which is a great example for a female character and has evolving goals over time shows her outstanding development. Well, if you guys liked the video, make sure to hit the like button. If you guys have any feedback or suggestions for a character you would like to see, by all means, let me know in the comments. And of course, if you guys could smash the sub button to help me reach my goal of 1k subs, I would greatly appreciate it. That being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.